welcome to the video today we're going to be doing a post-processing tutorial on the eagle nebula and we are going to be using the dwarf 2 telescope to get all of the data for that so let's go ahead and jump into the video right now on the channel uh the first thing that we're going to want to do is click on focus and we're just going to mess around with that until you see that it is nice and sharp with the stars i already did it i don't really want to mess with it anymore i suggest you don't use auto just use the plus and minus then we go to feature after that, we click on the calibration button. And what that's going to do is that's going to close the camera and reopen it in a part of the sky that has no sort of uh, trees or buildings so that it can take three different photos. And using those three different photos, what it's actually going to do is figure out where it is in the sky. Calibration success. Next, we want to go and select the Eagle Nebula and click confirm. And that is going to locate the Eagle Nebula in the sky. It is going to go to plate solved and after it is go to plate solved it will center our deep sky object in the middle of our screen okay it is go to tracking now so now what we want to do is we're actually going to go ahead and go to our options we're going to seconds click on 15 we're going to go to our gain and we're going to set it for 60. then we're going to leave it on iarc arc pass and we are going to go to our feature button and click on 999 images after that we're going to go ahead and press the start button and allow it to start shooting the photos okay so here is our finalized image so what we're going to do now is we're just going to take this image and go ahead and jump right into the serial program so let's go ahead and switch over to the laptop now Okay, and once we are on the PC, what we're going to do is create a serial folder. Inside of the serial folder, we're going to make another folder called the Eagle Nebula, since that is what we are processing tonight. We're going to click on that and make another folder called Lights, because tonight we are only using light data taken straight from the Dwarf 2 telescope. However, if you're going to be using any other telescope and you want to use a dark spat, dark bias or flat files go ahead and feel free to do so there's no reason for you not to but because we're using dwarf 2 data we're just going to use the lights folder and we're just going to go ahead and paste all of our lights data into this folder as you can see here once you have everything pasted in you can go ahead and open up the serial program And once you have it open, there's two very important things that we need to do. First thing, we want to go to Preferences. And we want to make sure our Bayer mosaic pattern is set as GBRG, because that is the uh, Bayer pattern that the Dwarf 2 telescope uses. However, if you're using a DSLR or any other telescope camera, um, you can go ahead and use Bayer information from the files header if available, and that will automatically convert your Bayer pattern to what it needs to be so go ahead and click apply and the next thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have the starnet program installed if you do not have the starnet program installed what we are going to do tonight is not going to work for you so go ahead and install that if you do not have it um, i have a youtube video on my channel about how to install it and that's just under five minutes long go ahead and watch that video and come back to this video so that we can go ahead and get started Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the stacking now. What we want to do is we want to click on registration. We want to click on simplified drizzle times two. And we want to go to our console tab. As you can see, I've already done a whole lot of stuff here today. Uh, just as a little practice for recording the video right now. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go and click on this little home button at the top left hand side of the screen. And we are going to click on our serial folder. And as you will see, our little Eagle Nebula folder will show up right here. And we want to click on open to set the directory for the Eagle Nebula. And you will know it's set for that if you see it right here. Now, we want to go to ahead and go to our scripts. And under scripts, you will see three different things you can use. You can use without darks, without DBF, or without flats. But what we're going to use tonight is the without DBF. Since we're only going to be using the light files, 
But if you want to use your dark files, or if you don't have dark files, but you have bias and flat files, you can use without dark, or you can use without flat. It's just whatever you guys see fit for yourself. So let's go ahead and get started with the stacking, and we will skip to the part where it is completely stacked. Okay, so rejection stacking is finally complete, so we can go ahead and get started on the exciting part, which is the post-processing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the upper left-hand side of the screen and click Open. And we are going to click on result.fit and go down to the bottom right and click open. Now, as we can see, all we see is nothing but stars, which is not what we want to see. So we're going to go down and click on linear. And we're going to click on auto stretch. And to get rid of this ugly green tint here, we're going to click on the link button. As you can see now, the nebula is right in the center of the image, but it is not what we want to have as our finalized image, of course. So we're going to click on image processing here and we are going to run a background extraction as soon as I can find it, which is right. Oh, sorry. I apologize. It's right here. And what you can do is you can do it manually if you want, just by clicking on random parts of the sky that do not have any clouds in them. And you can just click on as many as you want, um, just to even out the background of the image. And then just click compute background when you're done. If you don't want to do it like that, you can just click close. You can go back to background extraction and you can do it like this, which is honestly, I feel is a whole lot more faster and then you will get the same results. So go ahead and click on generate here and it will do it automatically. All these little boxes are automatically done. You just click compute background and it is done. The whole background is even. So click apply. Now we're going to go back to image processing. We are going to go to remove green noise and we are going to click apply. Then we're going to click close. Now the next thing we're going to do is go back to image processing. We are going to click on color calibration and we are not going to be doing a photometric color calibration today so that we can get the beautiful blue and yellow tones that we saw in the finalized image. So click on color calibration move this box to the side and just go ahead and select a part of the sky where there's not very many stars or any kind of nebulosity. So go ahead and select it, go back to this box, click use current selection, click background ne neutralization. And then we go select the part of the nebula, go back to the box, use the current selection down here, click apply, click close, and we are good to go. Now, the next part we need to do is go to image processing. And this is the part where we separate the stars from the nebula. So let's go ahead and go to our star processing. Star net star removal. And we are going to pre stretch the linear image. And we are going to upsample the image. We are not going to recompose the stars because we want to be able to edit these two files by themselves. So let's go ahead and click execute. And just wait for that to finish. Okay, so the Starnet process is now complete. So what we want to do is we want to click on the linear mode. And as you can see, it already did the pre stretch and you can see a lot of the nebulosity right here, but it's not quite what we want. So we're going to go to image processing. Again, we are going to go to color calibration, color calibration again. And we are just going to select a part of this dark sky that has no nebulosity and click on use current selection like we did last time background neutralization fantastic select the nebula use current selection and click apply very nice we're going to click close and we are going to go back to image processing again so now what we're going to do is the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation now, something I saw on the video done by Queeve is he clicked on the middle part right here as a symmetry point and then proceeded to move the stretch factor just to get the nebulosity to show up. But as you can see, that's not really going to work out very much on this one because we did not do the photometric color calibration. So what we're going to do is we are just going to have to do a little bit of trial and error here. So choose certain parts of the line here on the bottom 
not not anywhere on here nowhere here just on the bottom and start moving the stretch factor until you see the nebulosity starting to show up the way that you want it to and you can go ahead and play around with this as much as you want um, if you want you can just pause the video until you find a good spot and just come back to the video once you are finished and once you are finished you can just come back and we will continue so uh go ahead and pause it if you have to i'm going to continue uh just go ahead and try to catch up so let's go ahead and click apply and we're going to click close and we are now going to go to image processing again and go to histogram transformation we're going to go ahead and go to one here and we're going to click enter we're just going to start dragging this around and move this over here just to get more of the nebulosity that we want just kind of play around with it until you feel like it is how you want it we're going to click apply once you are done and then click close Again, just pause it if you have to. Just go back. Just take your time with it. Play around with it. This is going to be your image, and you want it to be as perfect as possible. So now we want to go to image processing. We are going to click on color saturation, and we are just going to put the background factor all the way up to 2 and start moving this around just to really enhance the colors of this beautiful nebula. After that, we are going to click apply, and here is our starless image. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to want to combine these stars and the nebula image. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to save this. We are going to click on image processing. We are going to go to star processing. And we are going to go on star recomposition. Now, once we are onto the star recomposition, we want to go to the background search parameters and click on the file here. The file we're going to want to open is the starlessresult.fit and click open. As you can see, our file is now here. And we want to go to start stretch parameters and click on here. And we're going to click on the star mask result.fit because that did not need a lot of processing. Click open. As you can see, we now have our stars. Now you can really just play around with how big you want your stars to be. You can make them tiny, you can make them massive horribly ugly if you wanted to i don't know why you would want to do that but i mean i suppose you could but for this we're just going to go ahead and adjust it until we feel like it's nice and pretty and you can do the same on yours just do it as much as you want until you are satisfied with your image again just pause the video if you have to just play around with it this is your image in the end so i'm going to click apply on both of these things and i'm going to click on close now here's my finalized image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to save it as a unique file and it's saved into my working directory. So we're going to go to files, go to Eagle Nebula and click on our saved image. So here's our saved image. I'm personally quite happy with this. You can actually see a lot of the detail of the nebula. I'm not sure if you noticed, but the Pillars of Creation is what it's called. It's actually located right here. You can look it up on Google if you don't know what it is. But it has very nice coloration to this image. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. It's honestly my fifth time doing it tonight. I had a lot of trouble recording this video. Um, a lot of issues with the audio. Uh, a lot of issues with the video. I'm not sure what's going on. Hopefully it works this time. I'm honestly just really hoping it works out. Um, I hope you guys are also satisfied with your image. Um, please stay tuned for the next video. In the next video, I'm going to try to do the North America Nebula, uh, see how that comes out. I'm going to try to basically do the same process as we did here. Now, of course, your image isn't going to look exactly the same as this. Everybody has their own light pollution, their own filters, their own camera. Um, but hopefully you got something around this, hopefully even better than what I got here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for more videos. You leave a like and subscribe. And I wish you guys clear skies. Please have a good night.